So, the, we are going to continue this lecture on innovation in emerging markets uh, uh, taking off from uh, last time. Uh, what uh, we did last time was uh, we defined what are emerging markets. These are countries like India, China, Russia, uh, Brazil and so on, the BRIC countries plus several others. We have list, shown a list of uh, 31 countries and there is the, we also defined uh, uh, two kinds of innovation, the new to the world and new to the market kind of innovations. And we said in emerging markets, uh, new to the market kind of innovations are more needed because they are developing economies, economies and the infrastructure is weak. And so whatever uh, are the developments, either cell phones or uh, uh, or focal package food or whatever innovations that has happened in the developed world can be transferred here and vice versa. And we have developed an innovation framework for, for this and we also considered under the ecosystem framework, we also talked about co-evolution and we also talked about uh, conflict in the innovations and so on. So, we also considered uh, the four innovations in innovations in supply chains and resources and delivery mechanisms. So, today what we are going to do is uh, to talk about uh, the innovations uh, uh, in the institutions. Institutions are governments and social groups and they matter a lot nowadays and uh, in terms of because uh, uh, the after the financial crisis, governments are taking a, a very active role in felicitation of various activities in, uh, uh, in the world. So, basically we will talk about what are the innovations that are possible in institutions and I will take a do a case <coughs> or an example of the telecom growth in India. Telecom growth in India, if you look at it, uh, I am going to present that it is the result of innovations both in institutions as well as by companies. So, this is an illustrative case where companies and countries can work together towards uh, innovations and building a blockbuster market. So, I will conclude this lecture. So, what are the innovations in institutions? So, what is the role of government? The capacity of a nation to innovate is a cornerstone of productivity. I mean, there are several examples of countries who have taken, uh, for example, uh, the countries like Singapore and uh, countries like uh, uh, Finland, uh, which has invented the basically the uh, uh, a cluster for cell phones and so on, which has changed their economies. So, I think the country should know where their strengths are and try to do the corresponding innovations. What is innovation? It refers to the country's ability to upgrade business environment continually, to support and encourage its companies to be competitive both nationally and internationally. So, what we are having is innovation in a product, innovation in a sub process is our innovations in resources. They are different for innovation in the government. Government need not have to invent the products, but it has to have a business environment that supports and encourages the companies to be competitive and both nationally and internationally. And it is also support the educational institutions and other R&D institutions, which will basically innovate new products and processes. Earlier, the governments were running the companies, but now most of the governments are going out of this because after the liberalization, the so called privatization has happened and after the privatization, they are best to assume new roles. What are the roles the government should have? There should be catalysts of market development, enablers of productivity and efficiency. How do you how can they enable the productivity and efficiency? They can enable the labor productivity by having skill based trainings as well as educational institutions and as regulators ensuring markets remain open and equitable. So, this is one of the uh, things of all the telecom regulators, every regulator that promoters of private sector expansion, 
by providing funds, by providing the education manpower, by providing all the facilities like power, water and by promoting special economic zones and so on and stimulations of human capital for resource, common capital resource development. So basically they, they should start the education institutions, skill development institutions, have the infrastructure and all that and provide a business environment for companies to grow. That is what it means. That is the purpose of this. So there are several innovations that the government have said. Special economic zones for example is an innovation. PPP that is the uh, pub, uh, pub, uh, that is the uh, private public partnership is another innovations that the, the governments have done. Now deregulation as an innovation is another. Many successful service companies owe their existence and success to the opening of markets or deregulation by the governments. For example, companies such as Airtel, Jetways, Airways in India, Southwest, eBay and others in USA and so on. So in old days all the uh, the, the, the infrastructure companies are owned by the governments like power, telecom, uh, 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 the airlines, all these companies which are critical for the country, they are all owned by the government. But this new, uh, but what happened was that the, the governments privatized, started by the United States and, and the UK and the deregulation of this have succeeded through these entrants succeeded through their own innovations. Now when do you, do it, you when you enter a market a company faces competition to to succeed in the market what the companies they have to innovate. So they innovate new products new this one new business models or they use the new technologies and try to succeed in that and be competitive. So this is this is the thing that the deregulation as in as innovation has happened. So, so we have outlined that that's the uh, this one. So what happened in this particular chapter? We have outlined all possible innovations in the ecosystem framework. People may say, why? You know, what do I do with all the list? So, but it is important when you are in a particular vertical. You should look at uh, the innovations that your government do, innovations in resources, your own supply chain, your own delivery so that you can evaluate the options and then see depending on if some things are fixed, you can see how you can co-evolve and convergence of technologies so that you can create a blockbuster industry. Now what are if, uh, people ask what are the kinds of things that you expect? which will be blockbuster industries in the near future. The fluid security in emerging markets, affordable housing, skill training, education to employment. Now one thing that happens in education is it does not guarantee employment. So that education to employment is another uh, this one that some of the vital issues they need that use STEM framework in the emerging markets. So we will conclude this uh, particular lecture here with the uh, 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 with this here and then I will just do one example and that example is on Indian Telecom and for the Airtel. So the Indian Telecommunication com Telecom industry uh, is a large and vital part of the global economy. Any telecom industry is uh, this one. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell uh, is the initial discovery is uh, send sound waves over wire. That was his discovery and to inventive engineers across the world that churned out decades of breakthrough innovations. The industry has long standing and impressive tradition of innovation. So everything is innovation from Alexander Graham, Graham Bell to now where you have a cell phone not only carries uh, audio, it also carries uh, video things. You could do several things using your cell phone nowadays. Telecommunications infrastructure has substantial impact on economic growth. It is known now that, that telecom infrastructure matters a lot in terms of the growth and uh, in every sector of the economy, in agriculture and in marketing in uh, manufacturing and in services. In business, local or global communications are vital for collaboration, marketing, sourcing, etc. So the telecom industry one need not have to 
uh, talk loud about uh, it's this one, it's well known. So, what are the factors that draw reforms around the world in telecom? You know, the telecom, every, every country in the world used to own telecom in this every government. But why uh, uh, there is a deregulation of this? Exceptionally poor performance of state owned telecom firms. Long waiting periods for telephone connections, unreliability of connections, large subsidies draining national treasuries. In other words, these companies, instead of making profit, they are making losses. But since they are government owned, the government has to basically subsidize these, these enterprises or because they cannot close down because telecommunications is such a vital industry for uh, the country, so they have to keep it on. So, pressure from international lending organizations to divest. Comparison of pre and post privatization financial and operating performance reveals increased sales, profits, investments and employment following privatization. And also worldwide wave towards privatization shared by started by Britain's Thatcher government in 1979. Privatization faced resistance from labor unions because labor unions are more comfortable as government employees, opposition parties and armed forces, national security concern due to involvement of foreigners. So people were saying if the telecom companies are, are privatized or globalized, then there is going to be a national security concern. So, world growth depends on the telecom industry sector. So, let us see what the growth. Telecom market is highly concentrated in the developed world. And in the developing countries, investment in telecom infrastructure is considered a necessary foundation for economic growth. Privatization has also this has been done to meet the WTO obligations. Several countries are me me members of the WTO and WTO has ruled as privatization of the telecom, this one. And several countries have liberalized their telecom, this one. And the growth has been phenomenal since then. In a landmark fact, 68 countries which control 95 percent of world's market have agreed completely liberalize their telecommunications. But of course, now there are problems with, uh, with the IT, uh, you know, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn and all that, what you say there and what this one, that is different from having a telecommunication link. In other words, having a telephone is vital and how you use it, having an internet it is all, but how to use it is a different thing. So, there are a lot of restrictions on how to use this facility. As long as you use it in the internet fashion, there should not be any problem. So, if you want to map uh, the telecom uh, uh, ecosystem, how do you map it? What is a telecom ecosystem? I mean, it all depends on what players you are talking about. Are you talking as a subscriber, that's what you have, or you are talking of the telecom ecosystem, telecom uh, subsystem itself. So, let us look at the telecom system. So, if you have a telecom system, this is called a service chain. There are supply chains and service chains. Usually, supply chain term is used for goods transfer, whereas service chain is used for when there is a service transfer across the network. So, basically you can see that there are voice, voice and data customers like you and me who use voice customers and there are network operators like we have so many network operators here BSNL to Airtel to and others and there are infrastructure providers. I mean there are all kinds of towers uh, and other uh, equipment uh, that are needed uh, to uh, uh, for this or are the telephone cables, uh, either optical cables or whatever underground cables that infrastructure provides the towers in case of Wi-Fi and all that and also the manufacturers of this equipment cables and others. So, you have the manufacturers and the manufacturers provide to the infrastructures and 
network operators and voice data customers that we have. So whether they are linked or not, they are linked in, in some fashion, but they could be independent operators, each have their own supply chain. Other. In other words, if you are a voice and data customers, you have to have a buy a cell phone, you have to have a connection from some somebody and then you have to pay the bills and all that and uh, use the network and so on. So that becomes your problem. So the, the telecom service chain has this and similarly the infrastructure, if you are providing the cables or if you are providing the towers and so on, then there, they depend on the manufacturer or other laborers to, to use this and also the cost and other kinds of things. The network operators are the interface between the customers and, and, and the network. They is basically, they may not own the infrastructure, uh, but they use the infrastructure and they will have a deal for this. So the network operators are the ones that are most visible or to, to the data customers and they are responsible for providing these facilities here. So if you look at uh, the institutions, that there are lots of institutions because telecom activity is a very sensitive activity. It's a very important activity but highly sensitive to the national interest. So there is telecom uh, regulatory authorities, uh, whether it is India or some other place. There are lots of government regulators and their quality, social and climate issues. Of course, you have uh, particularly if you are using wireless, then it's supposed to, uh, there are lots of uh, health issues concerned with cell phones and others. And there are other social issues. And FDI policies for entry of foreign. When you are globalizing this, the infrastructure providers, if you want them to come and provide the infrastructure, that and the network operators, and the manufacturers, then you have to have foreign direct investment property uh, entry for those. So you have to have regulations uh, to to be changed to allow the telecom operators to this. I mean, it's important. One should recognize that in India, after liberalization, the there each month one crore new customers, new customers are added in the telephone in the previous years. So the tele density has is almost like eighty percent. That means eighty percent of the people in India, whether rich or poor or whatever, they have a telephone connection or a cell telephone. So these are basically the issues that uh, uh, that one need to one need to consider. So the FDI policies uh, for entry of foreign companies, these these are needed. And resources, what are the resources needed for the telephone companies? There are of course finance, insurance companies, skill training, education and so on. They need equipment manufacturers here. The equipment manufacturers who who provide this and the universities R and D and so on, they are needed because there is a lot of research that is needed in terms of materials and so on. And of course, there is a uh, there is the power and water and other issues. Yes. And then, of course, in terms of delivery infrastructure, is a very important thing. There is contract manufacturers for cell phones and content providers for advertising because there is advertising that is used using the telecom, this one. The retail chains, for example, if you are using a cell phone, there are retail chains who sell basically the prepaid, uh, the top ups and so on and all that. So if you are looking at the telecom ecosystem, it is a very interesting ecosystem which you can map. So you can take, if you are using uh, some other uh, yeah, particular uh, this one like Airtel or BSNL, you can take this and more particularly map the ecosystem for that. Right? So that should be a very interesting exercise to map the telephone ecosystem where you have the service chains, resources, institutions and delivery service mechanisms. So the Growth of uh, the wireless subscriber base in India, you can see from 2001 to 2010, there are 636 million subscribers 
India's population is 1.2 billion and this wireless subscribers there in addition to the wireless wireless there are landline subscribers and so on but more importantly you should see the growth you should see the growth of uh, this uh, particular thing from 2002 2010 so this is this is a phenomenal growth that is seen in a, anywhere and in India, where the telephone, I mean, 10 years ago, the telephone services are not uh, very, very good. But today, everybody has a cell phone. So the Indian telecom growth has been phenomenal. It has been adding one 15 to 20 million subscribers every month. And the wireless segment in India is much larger than the wireline segment. And the rural markets are expected to be the next key drivers. So, if you look at India, it has about 400 million people in the urban areas and 800 million people in the rural areas. So, if it, if it per percolates it to the rural areas, then uh, the growth is going to be this one. I mean, another thing one should, one should recognize is uh, communication is important for everyone, but the telephone gives you voice communication. Now, voice communication is more important, particularly when people are not educated. They know, they don't know how to read and write, but they know how to speak and they're intelligent enough and they're communicated. So, convergence of several ecosystem innovations is responsible for success of Indian wireless industry. So, if you look at the Indian wireless industry, this is the phenomenal growth that has happened. Uh, why did and how did this happen? So there are two factors that we are going to show to explain this particular slide and that is the innovations in the government, particularly in terms of deregulation and second thing is innovations from the companies in the changing in the business models and so on. So basically that is what this slide is about. And so, what are the innovations in uh, telecom ecosystem from the government and companies? So, we are going to look at this uh, this one. So, the deregulation of uh, the telecom that has happened, the government has deregulated the telecom industry and with many positive policies. So, it used to be completely owned by the government. It used to have uh, landline, it owned the entire network. It used to have a telephone company which manufactures the, uh, the, cell, the phones and so on. So it is entirely the government owned. So people used to say you take it or leave it and if you have to wait for years for, uh, for getting a landline connection. So the landline connection used to be a big problem and thus people wait. But what happened with the deregulation? It allowed private and foreign players to set up shops through FDI independently or through joint ventures. So there are a lot of foreign players where from developed countries where the market has been saturated. They were invited into this and they created special economic zones to attract equipment and other manufacturers. So the special economic zones as I told you in the last class that they are zones where they have power, water and all the infrastructure, everything and they are given SOPs in terms of uh, uh, the taxes and others and they can export if they want and they, are, they have to give the uh, uh, percentage of uh, uh, the manufactured equipment uh, to local, uh, local government firms and so on. So, the special economic zones is one thing that, that is uh, this one allocated spectrum through auctions uh, allowed foreign players to participate as manufacturing and service players creating a booming industry through FDI. So, basically the, the deregulation it has created a, a booming industry in India and because of deregulation privatization and also it allowed lot of foreign players and into the company, into the country and not only they, they allowed foreign players, but they have provided them with lot of facilities. 
apart from deregulation they can come independently or they can throw joint ventures and they are given status of special economic zones that they need not have to pay taxes and other things of course uh, everything is is still regulated but still they were given a lot of uh, benefits so if you look at this i mean the, the evolution of the regulation from uh, uh, ibf.com from 1992 private players allowed and there is a national telecom policy formulated in 1994 troy established as an independent regulator troy is telecom regulatory authority of india has been established in 1997 and 1999 ntp led to migration from high cost fixed license fee to low cost revenue sharing and bsnl established by department of telecommunications so and internet telephone telephony initiated you know, reduction of license fees broadband policy formulated fda fdi limit from 59 to 74 in 2004 attempt to boost rural telephony so a uh, number of portability increased addition of 3g services in 2007 so in other words if you look at all this everywhere as we went along from on the timeline this gives you a list of uh, regulations which have evolved and which have led to what we are today in terms of uh, uh, the telephone industry so the, the point is that uh, the the fdi limit is one thing and the broadband policy is another and another one that uh, this one is that was there is the from postpaid to prepaid in other words you can just stuff having a uh, a connection which postpaid means you use the telephone and then pay it and they will mail you and so on on the other hand you can get a sim card with uh, a prepaid money of whatever money you have and then you can use it and that is jump in the numbers that's because the most people want to have a, a cell phone they may not have a house address uh, they don't want to be bothered with uh, with paying these telephone bills every month and so on it is also good for these telephone companies because the prepaid uh, the prepaid one they are getting the money before uh, the the uh, services are used and that is an advantage for them so here we see that uh, uh, the foreign direct investment and other merchant activities increased in number for example in the telecom vodafone has come and vodafone has purchased a stake in hutch and reliance communications uh, uh, is a big player and telcom malaysia is another player and maxis modern telecommunication maxis communications acquired 7% stake in airtel ericsson so these are all the big players that uh, uh in the telecom sector which uh, uh, this one they have this airtel aircel spice and so on so the ericsson uh, to design plan and deploy manage bharti airtel network to facilitate their expansion in the rural areas and so on so basically there are collaborations between companies with foreign players and that has given a rise to a lot of uh, uh, strength to this the indian telecom industry uh, has a 74% limit on the telecom services segment and the government of india permitted 100% uh, fdi in manufactured telephone equipment <coughs> so basically it, the telecom equipment is is vital so the fdi in telecom equipment is is um, the foreign direct investment it was highest 680 million dollars in 2005 6 and in 6 7 it is 521 and so on the indian telecom industry has always attracted foreign investors so the cumulative fdi flow during august 91 to march 2007 period in the telecom sector 
amounted to uh, $3 billion and it is the largest sector to attract FDI in India in the post liberalization era. FDI calculation takes into account radio paging, cellular, mobile and basic telephone services in the telephone sector. See the point I am making here if you look at the statistics this and the previous one. There are regulatory innovations which are happening and these innovations are mostly in terms of allowing foreign players in terms of the FDI, in terms of how much stake they can have and you will find that uh, uh, this, this, all these players came and they put in a lot of money and the result is an improvement in the telecom sector. The telecom sector is vital both for personal communications as well as business communications. The number of internet users have, have, uh, have, uh, has increased enormously. So, what, what we have here is a, a sector that is so important for the economy of this country and for its growth, the government policies have given a fillip. That is the idea here. So, if you look at this, for example, this is the growth uh, in the year 1997 to 2005. You can find this steep growth here and the also the charges per minute also have come down. The charges per minute also have come down and due to various reasons. Now, one of the reasons, a steep reason is the reason where they have introduced pre uh, prepaid uh, SIM cards rather than postpaid SIM cards in this particular sector. So, so several of these innovations have come into this. Into the affair. So, we have seen so far the innovations by the country that is the India, how it is basically in terms of three or four factors. One is deregulating the industry. Second one, that means instead of by the government, it can be private companies. These private companies can be either Indian or they can be foreign companies. And foreign companies are allowed foreign direct investment. They are include infrastructure companies, they include the manufacturers like cell phones and others. And they were given FCs, SCJ status in some of this. So, Basically, the government has some, done several things uh, by liberalizing the economy at various points into to, to get the booming uh, tele telecom sector. Now, it is not enough if the government does it. Government does the, all this as a facilitator, but it is to companies to take on and take these things and improve the further because ultimately, where do you get your service from? You also get your service from the companies. So, let us look at what the companies did in this particular case. So, there is this what is called supply chain innovation. So, the major innovation in this industry came from creating quality with the product redesign at affordable cost with features of voice, text, picture, games, etc. Now, if you take a cell phone, the, the cheapest cell phone today is about 1000 rupees, 1200 rupees you get a phone with all the features of voice, text, picture, games, etc. You can SMS, you can receive calls and so on. Now, how is this possible? It is product redesign at affordable cost. So, who is responsible for this? Industry. So, the industry came up with creative product, it may not be a new cell phone, it is the same product, same same designs, but how do you make it cheap? This is like Tata Nano. How do you make a cheap cell phone, which is affordable in 1000 rupees? Of course, if you want to pay more money, you can get it up to uh, any amount of money. This created a contract manufacturing industry in India with Nokia, Flexatronics and the likes playing a key role. So, they are given an SEJ status in Chennai and other places and this has created a, a big industry. There were marketing innovations such as prepaid, 
family and corporate connection discounts etc that led to obtaining a large share from every customer. So, these are the marketing innovations like prepaid. These may not be you know a product process innovations which require a lot of research and so on. It is basically smart moves by some of these companies by knowing that people you know they do not want to get a telephone bill, they do not know how to pay and all that. So, all that is whenever they have the money they fill in the, the, the SIM card and use it. So, and this cell phones have, have replaced lot of other things in this and of course, the landline connections in India is almost like uh, one fifth or one sixth of what, uh, uh, what the cell phones are. So, if you take Reliance for example, it is a company which has this, it asks the question, it has, actually it has one which has revolutionized some of the markets, do not ask how large the market is but estimate how large it can be made to be with an appropriate intervention. How can you, how large can you make this market? This is like Tata Nano car, when do you have a big market for this? If I give a car for 1 lakh, what is my market? So, if, if you are a, a marketing professional and when the cell phones are being introduced into the country, how do you estimate the market? You estimate the market saying that oh there are so many landlines, half of people will shift here and there will be some some people corporates will shift into cell phone or with all this you will get some number and that number will be probably the same line, same thing as the landlines, number of landlines. But here the question is asked, look how large can this market be and they came out with an answer of 800 million. They are 1.2 billion people if you take the kids and very old people, the rest of them who can read, who can speak, they want to have a cell phone of their own. But when will they have it? How do you make it affordable? And that is the one that they said, if you make it as cheap as a postcard, writing a postcard. One, one minute, uh, one, one minute, one rupee kind of thing, then you can, you can make the, this large as a large market. So, they said forget middle class, upcoming class kind of estimates. So, tell me how much, how large it can be, how many people can use the phone if I can make it, make it happen. So, that is how the Reliance came up with an estimate of 800 million and that is the correct kind of innovation at this one. This is, you can call it marketing estimation. But that has led, led to uh, a blockbuster industry. And the second thing that uh, uh, Airtel has done is what we call unbundling the corporation. This is a, a famous paper by Hagel and others is unbundling the corporation in hard world business review. But my interpretation of what Airtel did is that they have unbundled this corporation. So, if you take Bharti value chain, oh, this one, any company value chain, there are three products. One is the infrastructure management, build and manage facilities for high volume repetitive operational tasks. That is, these are all the things like uh, the uh, the towers, uh, the cables and so on, you have to build and manage the facilities for high volume and operational tasks so that the, uh, the people can use it. And the second one is the product innovation, conceive attractive new products and services and commercialize them. So, that is the third one is customer relations management, identify and attract and build relationships with customers. So, what uh, Bharti did was I mean, if you were doing this for telephone, what is infrastructure? The infrastructure is the, is the towers and uh, other kinds of telephone equipment, cables and all that. Well, in mostly if you take at the old telephone companies, all these three are owned by all the company, or the, uh, by all the telephone providers. Well, this particular diagram is valuable, is, 
is valid for any company or in any, any industry. But we are talking only in terms of telecom, this infrastructure and customer relations and product innovation are basically are the three parts of this. Now the problem with, with this with infrastructure is cost effective, cost intensive because you are building an infrastructure and the returns are very slow to come in and they are high volumes and repetitive operational tasks because if you want to maintain this one thing is to build this and second thing is to manage this third one is to use the services behind this. So all these three require lot of money it is asset intensive and it requires lot of maintenance it requires people with low skill well trained labor. Now on the other hand if you go to product innovation where you have conceived new products and services for this then these require researchers and they have to be high paid and uh, uh, they have to be given other they have to be treated differently from others. Whereas customer relations management is identify, attract and build relationships with customers. You have to basically have relationship, have shops nearby or go to the customer and give as get as many customers as possible and see that they pay the bills and you collect the money from them and so on. In this Bharti Airtel outsource the entire cellular network to three existing equipment suppliers Ericsson, Nokia and Siemens at 7, 725 million for a three year deal. And Bharti outsource call center operations to four BPOs, IBM Duct, Emphasis, Teletech and Hindu Jati MT, a thousand crore deal. So what does it do? I mean it has outsourced the part of the customer this one and product innovation in telecom is not very much because you know you have the cell phones which you buy and only thing that is left is the customer relations management. Basically attract as many customers as possible and see that they pay the bills and collect the money. So that is what they have this one. So using my interpretation of what Bharti has done is this value chain reconstruction by using this and this has created. Uh, uh, a huge this one for this particular company. So if it, if you look at I mean uh, let us look at a little more of this in this because if you take product innovation the, the economics says early market entry allows for a premium price and large market share. So speed is the key, speed is the key in this. And in a uh, customer relations management, high cost of customer acquisition makes it imperative to gain larger shares of the wallet. Once you have spent the infrastructure money, economies of scope are the key. So you should get a variety of customers from, from this. And infrastructure management, high fixed costs make large volumes essential. So economies of scale are key. So if you are in a company, then speed, economies of scope, economies of scale, they require different kinds of people, different kinds of culture. The product innovation is employee centered, coddling, creative stars, whereas in uh, customer relations management, highly service oriented customer comes first, whereas in infrastructure, cost focused, stress on standardization, predictability and efficiency. As I said before, infrastructure management requires skill training and low cost labor whereas the product innovation requires discovery product discovery and they are high cost people in this whereas CRM is lot of handshaking is involved and here you require talented people who can attract customers. So that is where the these three this one once you realize that in the telecom industry these three and where to concentrate you outsource the rest to good people and you concentrate only on that 
so that you can build a, a, a good business. So, that is what happened in this. This line signed with IBM Dax, Memphis, Teletech and Hinduja TMT for setting up contact centers in each of the four zones of the country with 6000 seats initially. So, they basically they have this. The deal is a part of Bharti strategy to focus on the core areas of product innovation, marketing and brand building. So, that is where uh, the, this outsourcing deals have, have come up with this. So, this is the basic uh, diagram that supposing this can be extended to others. I will just give an example of a hospital. Supposing you have a hospital. Hospital has an infrastructure and it has also the equipment, medical equipment uh, and so on. So, if you do not know, if you take any particular hospital, the 80 percent of the cost goes for for the the building and the equipment. And what are the kinds of innovations that you require and customer relations management. And of course, you know in terms of customer relations, this is the service delivery, doctors and all that. So, the management of uh, the hospital and the delivery take the rest. So, if you, if, you, if you look at, if you concentrate on on the on a particular service industry, if you take educational institutions, what are the, you, you have a lot of in buildings and all that, you have basically your students, uh, this one, if you have all the processes and all that, you can see what you can outsource and what you have to do it yourself. So, if you, if you look at uh, the Bharti, uh, the core uh, product innovation, marketing and brand building are the ones. So, what we have here is all dimensions of service ecosystem need not be important to all the industries. So, if you have a take an ecosystem, ecosystem has the service chain, it has the regulators, it has the delivery mechanisms and it has the resources. So, if you, if you take the Bharti ETL, the institutions or the regulations, they are the ones which became very important and the supply chain of various companies became very important. So, in terms of the resources, resource providers and all that that has come and the delivery mechanisms are, are uh, pretty simple in terms of there are no innovations although they are needed. So, if you take some other service chain like a hospital or an education system, then the the dimensions of service ecosystem need not be, the, the, all the things may not be important. In the, if you take a, a education, then the service delivery becomes, delivery mechanisms become important, whether it is web based, whether it is face to face and so on. And the resources become important, the teachers become important. And the institutions may not be that important because the all the uh, rules, regulations are are made one time and they need to be followed. So, it depends on the service service chain that you have. And in the telecom case, deregulation and privatization are not the way for creating a blockbuster innovation. And of course, the, uh, the governments have done this, but it is also important to uh, to see the fact that the companies also played a very positive role. For example, Reliance, Bharti and all that. So, they looked at the entire scenario and they looked at the fact that there is, this is a kind of co-evolution that you have seen the telecom industry and in the telecom industry, the government is deregulating, the foreign players have come can I use that to advantage the foreign players instead of my setting up the facilities. So, that is where Bharti said look let me hire the infrastructure of the other people and let me hire the call center instead of having my own call center, let me have the call center from somebody else. But let me do the others which others cannot do for me. So, let me innovate the products for this, how do I, what are the packages, I give it to the customers and let me do the customer relations management and that is how the innovations have come into this one in the telecom. Deregulation, privatization and let the way of creating blockbuster industry. Innovations by companies in producing cheaper products, 
for example, uh, people like uh, Flexotronics and others and Nokia, they came up with very cheap uh, uh, products and also they have come with the SIM cards uh, which, uh, which said that you pay so much money and you get so many, uh, so many uh, minutes of time and also so many your incoming calls are free. These kind of deals have created uh, this and of course outsourcing has uh, created for uh, Bharti Airtel, the outsourcing is one of the prime things that they have done and business model innovations or other contributing factors for uh, this. So, what uh, we have uh, done here in this uh, lectures is that in the innovations in the emerging markets uh, in this, we have first defined the emerging markets and we have said that in emerging markets a successful innovation is one which creates a blockbuster industry. That is what we are looking at and we have seen the innovation framework which has innovation in supply chain resources, delivery mechanisms and this and how in certain sectors like the telecom which was basically in the hands of the government till now uh, when it was liberalized and privatized and it allowed other foreign players into the country how it has led to uh, growth. I mean you can, you can take other sectors of the economy or uh, other sectors like education and others uh, or healthcare uh, to see mm, what they are doing. I mean every sector may need, every sector has not uh, uh, prospered as much as the telecom sector. But the telecom sector has, uh, mm, that is a sector which is where information and communication is basically vital for the growth of uh, both individuals as well as companies as well as countries. But there are other sectors like education, skill based training and food security which where you can use these technologies and these kind of ideas and create blockbuster industries. One of the things is I am going to do in future classes is for food security using the current players like the hawkers, like the Kirada shops, how do you create a blockbuster food security industry. So, we will do all that in the next class. Thanks.